Okay, question seven. The question will have some sort of introduction, like the one you can see on the screen. It's going to ask you about a training program to improve fitness, to improve skill development, and it's about concern with a group of AS level physical education students. The one thing it doesn't say is who these people are. The one thing it doesn't say is what skill it's involved. And the one thing it doesn't say is their level of basic fitness before you start. So the one thing you can't assume is anything. You assume nothing. Don't, under any circumstances, write that these are ASPE students and therefore they are, when I've seen things like they are elite performers, um, they are incredibly fit, they are in the autonomous stage of learning. They're not. It doesn't say that at all. I've even seen some students who've decided to talk about their own ASPE class and say things like, oh, Jimmy plays football, but he's not very good. Uh, he's weak on his right foot, therefore I have to work on his left foot. I don't, don't know that. These are going to be very, very introductory statement. This first sentence, you've been asked to produce a training program, etc., is just an opening statement. Don't read it into, and read, oh, sorry, don't read anything into it in any great depth at all. So don't write about them being ASP students, and don't read the first half dozen words and say, right, here's my training program, unless it specifically asks about training. So don't make any assumptions based on the first few words of question seven. Question seven comes in these sort of formats. Um, there'll be that introductory sentence, and then there'll be, like they were in May 2011 and in January 2012, one of sort of two types of questions. May 11, there was a question about workload intensities and guidance. In January 12, there was um, questions about fit principles and specificity to improve fitness. And there was something about command style teaching. So the main um, area of the question is the second part of the question. Not the first part that you've been asked to produce a training program to improve, improve um, fitness and improve skill. But the second part, which is phrased like these sort of exemplar questions. Okay. The question will be about different topics. One's on fitness, one's on skill. There are two different topics. You need to answer both. The one that's on fitness invariably is purely factual. From the list of topic areas we can use in the exam, they're all about factual recall, describing um, Principles of training, describing ways of measuring intensity, describing ways of doing fitness tests, purely factual recall. The other one, the skill development, is much more open-ended. And the important thing is you must answer both areas because they have equal weighting. There is as many marks for the fitness part as there is for the skill development part, and if you don't answer both areas, you will, in fact, lose at least one mark. At the start of question seven, if you're doing this as a reset, you may remember from the exam you took in May last year, there is a small space for planning. Use it if you want to, but we are not going to mark it because it's in bullet points. Planning is always done in bullet points. We don't mark bullet points. Don't you write in bullet points either. You write in prose. The skill question is an open-ended question. What would you do if? How would you do if? It's, it's a generalities question. The skill is never named. The performers are never described. And the situation is never described. So you have to talk in generalities. You must be talking about, well, if, for example, the student is like this, I would do this. If the, the task or the skill is like this, I would do this. And if the situation or the environment is like this, I would do this. So your second part of the um, essay question is about open-ended 
questions. The first part is about pure factual recall. More help. Question seven. You should expect, although there's no guarantee, but you should expect that there are roughly 20 creditable points in the mark scheme. Might be 19, might be 21, but roughly 20. That's always the aim of the marking team. And it's split between the two topic areas, the topic area of fitness, the topic area of skill development. So roughly 10 points in the mark scheme on skill, 10 points in the mark scheme on fitness and training. Your job when you write for your essay is to identify and get as many of those 20 creditable points into your answer as possible. There is no need for a structured essay in inverted commas, which you know it hasn't got to have an introduction, a main body of argument, and a summarizing conclusion. Doesn't need that. It just needs to be as many as those 20 credible points put down in any order. The only codice to all that, the only add on to all that, you must answer in prose. Don't answer in bullet points. Must answer in prose. And if your quality of language is adequate, use that word again, adequate, and you've got quite a balanced answer, you've got some points from the fitness component and some points from the skill components, you will get an extra mark for quality of language. So 20 creditable points, must write in prose, try to get as many of those points down, don't worry about the structure of your essay, even if, for example, you're asked a question about fitness and you start writing your answer and then you go on to answer about skill then at the end you suddenly remember one more important thing you haven't put down about fitness put it down it still gets marked you don't lose mark or lose marks for not being um, in the right order or anything like that so get as much information down as you possibly can okay we're going to look at some of the detail of question seven and some other stuff we're talking about. Okay, so training principles. First part of question seven, fitness and training. There are training principles identified by their initials, S-P-O-R-T, F-I-T-T. Quickly, write down what they mean, each of those terms. I'll give you a minute. Write down those terms. Ask if you're not sure. What does S stand for? What does P stand for in terms of training principles? It's revision. Okay, you should have written th things down like specificity, progression, overload, reversibility, tedium, the SPORT acronym. Developing from that, in terms of the middle one, overload, possibly the most important one, overload then requires these four other principles to be linked in. Linked in. So the F-I-T-T -T rubbish is linked into overload. In order to overload, you must, and should have completed that by now, adjust the frequency, the intensity, the time of training, and the type of training. So these are our main training principles. You wouldn't, I wouldn't, and no teacher would expect to get one mark or one valid point for each of those just being named. You need more depth. You decide, what, what do these things mean? What does specificity mean? What does progression mean? What does intensity mean? So when you're answering this in the exam, it's not for identifying the terms, it's for explaining what they mean. So you need to know what each of these terms mean. Okay, so what's specificity? And I know specificity means making the training specific, but what do we mean by that? Well, you need to talk about things in the exam, for example, like using the same energy system as you might need for your required activity. And that could be an anaerobic system. It could be an aerobic system. Just take 10 seconds to make sure you understand what anaerobic and aerobic means, not only in terms of the words, but in terms of the training. What is anaerobic training? What is aerobic training? 
Many activities, by the way, can be a mixture of both. Aerobic and anaerobic games are a good example where the energy system being used by the games player is often a mixture of anaerobic and aerobic activity. Training needs to be specific in terms of the muscle fiber type. Can you remember the two types of muscle fiber? That we've got fast twitch and slow twitch. And there's a link that you, mo you may know because you're doing um, A2 work at the moment. That slow twitch muscle fibers are linked into aerobic type activities and fast twitch muscle fibers are tending to link into anaerobic type activities. So your 